How often do we say or think to ourselves, with the benefit of hindsight, I wouldn't have done that. I should have said something. I should have taken more notice or reacted differently. Some of you may know that I enjoy walking and that I regularly meet up with a couple of long-standing friends to do a substantive walk. We're currently walking the Cornish section of the Southwest Coast Path. And at the moment, I am suffering from the benefit of hindsight. You see, the last walk I did with my friends was before the COVID-19 crisis had really taken a grip. And there were no measures in place and life was different. But it wasn't the best of walks. It started okay, if a little late, because I had a work commitment to attend to. We did have a lovely coffee and snack in a cafe. Then we left one car at the end of the walk and drove in the other to the start. But from there on, things did not go according to plan. And quite frankly, I soon became grumpy. Having set off, my dog escaped and it took me 15 minutes to get her back. She thought she was playing on the beach. I wanted to walk. Then having walked the first mile along the path, we found a notice saying that this section of the path was closed and that we had to go back the way we'd come and make a long diversion. Why, we wondered, wasn't there a notice in the car park? Back on track, but it started to rain. Really rain. Real Cornish rain. There was mud and steep and slippy hills fields of sheep to walk around the edge of. And to top it all off, we got lost at the end of the walk and couldn't find the car we'd left in the morning. It was not the best walk. I was definitely very grumpy at times. But with the benefit of hindsight, I now know it was the last such walk that I'd be able to have we don't know for how long. I now wish I'd enjoyed the whole experience a bit more. Even through the rain, there were glorious views and the company as always was excellent. If I'd known it would be the last such walk I'd have for some time, I would not have been so grumpy and I would have relished more the time spent in the fresh air with good friends. When we consider the Bible reading this morning, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, the triumphal procession, we have the benefit of hindsight. We know what comes next, and it's very hard not to let that influence our reaction to hearing this story year after year. Over the last three years, I have been accompanying groups through the Ignatian exercises part of which is to practice imaginative contemplation on particular Bible passages, of which today's reading is one. A frequent comment from participants having contemplated this passage is that they find it really hard to imagine themselves into this story because they know what's coming next. You see, they have the benefit of hindsight. I wonder what the disciples and friends of Jesus felt after the crucifixion when they thought back to that day when they had brought the donkey and its colt to Jesus before he entered Jerusalem to jubilant shouts and the waving of palm branches. Do you think they may have had some regrets about their reactions on that day? However, Although the disciples didn't have the benefit of hindsight, they had been given some foresight. It's just that they didn't always recognise it, or indeed heed it. They couldn't understand the predictions that Jesus made. And even though Jesus' request that they went to get the donkey so clearly pointed to scripture, they didn't seem to recognise it. But it says in Zechariah, a book they would have known well, Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. 
And in the same way, the psalm set for today also seems to predict the events of Palm Sunday because it says, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Bind the festal procession with branches. And that same psalm also seems to predict what we know happens next when it says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This text is very significant. We know this because it appears three times in each of the Synoptic Gospels when Jesus himself quotes it. Jesus also predicts his own suffering and death many times to the disciples, but they just don't seem to get it. Or perhaps they didn't want to hear or believe it. But in pointing to scriptures that would have been familiar to any good Jew, Jesus was trying to teach them, to warn them what would happen next, and to explain to them why it had to be that way. I believe Jesus is showing them how all that was happening was the fulfilling of scripture, and he is pointing them to why and what would follow. So I wonder what the disciples and friends of Jesus felt after the crucifixion when they thought about the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I wonder if they were able to see it as a fulfilment of scripture. I think they probably did, but probably much later when they'd reflected at length on all those events and all that Jesus had said to them. In other words, when they had the benefit of hindsight. But how does this help us today? Can we use scripture to help us? Certainly we can. For we can learn what sort of king Jesus is. A humble one. He comes into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And even knowing, as he certainly did, that he was going to his death, he willingly went there. He was a servant king, a king who loved, laughed, cared, healed, had compassion, wept. A king who is trustworthy, strong and compassionate. A month ago, who had the foresight to see where we would be today? Maybe a few people who understood how viruses work and can spread. But mostly we could not imagine where we find ourselves today. How it would feel to be isolated, locked down with our churches shut. But let's have foresight in this crisis. Let's heed the warnings, keep safe, help those in need whether it's as a volunteer, a community comforter, or as a prayer warrior. Let's act responsibly to protect the vulnerable and our NHS. Let's look to scripture to remind ourselves that we have Jesus. Jesus who understands absolutely what isolation feels like because he was abandoned, arrested, tortured and denied. And he suffered the most humiliating and painful death. Scripture shows us that we have a God who understands what it is to suffer, to mourn and to weep. And that he is there to comfort and strengthen us in all things. So let's determine now not to look back with hindsight. and not to find ourselves at some time in the future saying, if only. So we pray. Oh God, give us the courage to listen and reflect on our fears, doubts and uncertainties, and the grace to hear your voice amid this crisis, knowing you are with us, our rock, 
our refuge and our strength. Amen.